Okay, no, come on, come on this way. This way. Look, I got some information that Cheap Trick, you know, the rock band Cheap Trick, that live at Budokan, you know, those guys are right here, and I, I've got a score to settle with these guys, and I've been waiting a long time for this. So uh, just watch this here. Hey, open up in there. Yeah? Yeah, this is John Keister. They know who I am. This is John Keister, open up. Yeah, who is it? All right, hey, Rick Come Nelson, on. Cheap Trick. Nielsen. Neil you to get it right. N N Nielsen, yeah. right, Cheap Trick. Yeah? Okay, um... Okay, I was at your show here in 1977 when you guys opened for Kiss. Kiss, yeah. At the Coliseum? And, yeah. All right. Look, I had my very favorite hat on uh, that show, and I threw it on stage, and you guys never threw it back. And it was like... Oh, my no, no, we have some, come on. Oh. We have some stuff in here. Oh, okay. Okay. So what was it? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah, 77. 77. Yeah, that's right. It was a, <laughs> it was a yellow hat. A yellow hat. Yeah? No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no. Yes, that's it. Yo. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, my hat. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Anything else? Uh, well, actually, um, I haven't seen my mom since that show. Yeah, what's your mom's name? Uh, Beverly. Beverly? Yeah. Not our Beverly. What? Beverly. <laughs> mom, what are you doing here? We're about to party with these guys. Mom, get out of here. What, man, what are you doing with my mom, man? Oh, Lord. Mom, come on. Get out of here. Bye, Beverly. Bye. Bye, Beverly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Oh, it's so great to be here. It's great to be here in Seattle, the rock and roll capital of the world. You know, it's... But uh, the thing is that our rockers, they're not just musicians. They're philanthropists. They're activists. They're concerned, especially Pearl Jam. You know, over the last few... Yes, that's right. Pearl Jam. Over the... Over the over the last few months, they've been battling Ticketmaster, censorship, they're promoting abortion rights, and just this week, if you saw this, they've joined the battle to stop dissecting frogs in high school. Did you see that? <laughs> they're putting that in, yes. <laughs> Ethical treatment of animals. I'm telling you, Eddie Vedder is really tuned into teenage angst, and that's, that's where it all starts, when you gotta cut up that little frog. In that, <laughs> I know it freaked me out, and he's, he's got a new song about it, Jeremy was a bullfrog. I don't know if you said that. It's a good song. And uh, I'm glad someone is finally trying to make high school a better experience. And next week, I understand Pearl Jam is going to, they're going to start working on wiping out wedgies, which I think will be a good, <laughs> another campaign. It'll be good. Will they ever do another concert or album again? Well, not until they finish helping our community. And you know, a lot of rock stars do community service, but that usually comes after the big drug bust. But Pearl Jam, no. No. Pearl Jam has a big list of philanthropic efforts that they're going forward with now. For example, Eddie Vedder was spotted walking up and down 2nd Avenue putting quarters in expired meters. <laughs> yes. The entire band is doing free spaying and neutering between sets. Which is good. Coming this summer, Pearl Jam's family 4th of July fireworks. Also on Thursdays, the band goes door to door labeling household drugs and solvents with Mr. Yuck Snickers. Which is good. That's, they're giving back to the community, you see. Guitarist Mike McCready is helping to fix the Edmonds Ferry dock. <laughs> and finally, there's going to be a new hydroplane, the Miss Pearl Jam. That's going to be great. Isn't that great? Let's hear it. The Pearl Jam. Now, that's, you know, that's a band that's in touch with its feelings, which is a good thing. 
Of course, you can take a good thing a little too far. I want you to take a look at this. Coming soon from Never Underestimate the Power of My Uterus Pictures. <laughs> she was powerful. Tell Mr. Gates I'll call him back. Rich. I'll take it. Smart. I told you the bus tunnel was a bad idea. And pretty darn attractive, too. But then she got pregnant and became yet another victim of <laughs> raging hormones out of control. Yes, she's got hormones. Good morning, Linda. <laughs> hormones that are raging. Yeah, that's right. Oh, oh, hi, Linda. This is Barry uh, Smallin. He's the CEO of our parent corporation. How are you? Hello. Nice to How are you? Nice to meet you, sweetheart. Let me see Kyle. Oh, good. Really <laughs> raging. So how is everything? It's good. Good. Wait. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> Out of control. Attention, please. My breasts feel very sore today. Excuse me. Do you know what time it is? Uh, did I mention the word raging? <laughs> Think of the worst day you've ever had, and then multiply it by a million, and then stretch it over a nine-month period. Say, honey, did you iron my pants? It's the movie that makes the Stepford Wives look like an after-school special. <laughs> it's Raging Hormones Out of Control. Now raging at the Harvard exit. All right, stay with us. We've got a great show, and we'll be right back. interrupt this program to bring you a live feed from ESPN2, which you don't get on TCI because they could care less about you. We now take you to Peoria, Arizona for a Seattle Mariners press conference. Okay, quiet please. Quiet everybody. Hi, I'm Lou Pinella, Mariner manager, here to talk about the players' strike and the uh, replacement Mariners. All right, I'm not going to kid you. This is a tough situation that could have a profound impact on the future of baseball. However, it's also the best damn chance we've ever had to win the freaking pennant. <laughs> <laughs> you think we're ever going to win if everybody has real players? <laughs> not a chance in hell. Okay. <laughs> now, I want to introduce our director of player personnel, Doug Brooks, and head scout, Tony Lynn, who put together the best damn replacement squad in the league. How you doing? Hey. Now, Doug and Tony have found some great new Mariner players. And that's what they are. They are Mariners. I'm sick and tired of hearing them called the Seattle Scabs. <laughs> the Seattle Shams, I've heard that one. Yeah, or the Seattle <laughs> Second Rates, that's a good one. Or the Seattle Septics. Yeah, yeah, okay. How about yeah. the Seattle Mediocres or the Seattle Marinators? Yeah, what about the Seattle, <laughs> the Seattle Marys? <laughs> the Seattle Secretions? Yeah, I, think, I think we got it, fellas. Oh, yeah, don't forget there's the Seattle Whores. <laughs> <laughs> and the Seattle Festering Boils. Yes. All right, okay, all right. <laughs> We've had our fun, but now I'd like to introduce our director of marketing, Stacy Stone, who wants to tell you about an exciting fan contest. Stacy? Thanks, Lou. <laughs> That's right. We're looking for a slogan for our 95 Mariners, so if you have one, send it in. And here's a few that we've received so far. The Replacement Mariners, as if you could do better. <laughs> the 95 Mariners, bring your mitt. You might be pitching. <laughs> The Mariners. Strikes are nothing new to us. Okay, thank you, Stacy. Nice job. All right, now Team Vice President Debbie Singer will tell you about some changes you'll be seeing with the new players. Debbie? Thanks. First, we have some rule changes on the field. The batters will get four strikes. They can use the T-ball stand on request. And with every run, the opposing team has to take off an article of clothing. 
Now for the fans. Opening night will be parking lot bat night, where every car that enters the parking lot will be given a free bat in case they have any trouble getting past the striking players. <laughs> and during the seventh inning stretch on the big screen, we'll be playing the game Where's Randy, in which the fans will guess what station Randy Johnson is pumping gas at this week. <laughs> okay, thanks, Debbie. That one should be a lot of fun. <laughs> and I've got another one for you. At every single game, one lucky fan is going to win Ken Griffey Jr.'s paycheck for that game. <laughs> Pretty big damn check, too. <laughs> All right, now Dougie's going to tell you how great we did in recruiting replacement players. Dougie, take it away. Thanks, Lou. Now, before I bring out some of them, remember that some of the teams didn't do as well as we did. The Yankees are planning on starting that Potsy guy from Happy Days. <laughs> and the Braves have an option on Lyle Menendez. And now for our new players. First, I'd like to introduce Angie Blakely. Now, Angie always seems to be hanging around the locker room, so we figure she knows the game pretty well. Hi, I'm really looking forward to playing with the men. Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> Next is a brother team, Larry and Albert Swanson. Now, Larry and Albert... <laughs> thank you. Larry and Albert here will be playing second base together if the league will allow it. Is this the kingdom? It ain't that big. You can hit one out of here, Larry. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and also this year, we have a very special player to add to our <laughs> roster. We're very proud to bring back Woody Norrell who played for the Seattle Rainiers in 1934. <laughs> we would have never had this strike if Roosevelt was still the president. Uh, okay, Woody, thanks. <laughs> and finally, because the mayor and the moose won't cross the picket line, We've got something even better. Mikey the Moose. Hey, hey, wh when do I get paid here, man? What's going on? Yeah, all right. Oh, yeah, fine. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, see what I mean, everybody? It's going to be a great season, and we want your support, all of you. So just remember that old saying, if the world gives you lemons... You suck. <laughs> no, Tony. You make lemonade, damn it. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you in the door! amplification for almost live provided by American Music now open in Tacoma Oh man, I hope they play a whole lot of love. Damn it. Hey, what's wrong, man? I hate these pants. Well, put on something else. I can't. Well, I, you know, put something on, man. I don't want to get stuck in rush hour, okay? Do you think I look fat? <laughs> what? Yeah, you're right. I'm a pig. I didn't say you were a pig. Well, I am. Well. What, have you gained weight or something? Oh, don't tell me you haven't noticed. I haven't. Well, I have, okay? And now all my clothes don't fit, and when I walk, my thighs touch, and they're making that noise, too. Listen. <laughs> Hear that? No! And my butt is gross. Your butt isn't gross. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Come here. Oh, man, we gotta go. No, no, wait. Just, just a minute. Turn around. What? Just turn around. Yeah. Your butt is way better looking oh, than mine. Oh, no, it is. Uh, don't deny the obvious. Can we please go now? Not until you admit that in a comparative study between my butt and your butt, <laughs> my butt would be considered gross. You're not going to get me to admit that your butt is gross. <laughs> you just did. No, I didn't. You just admitted my butt is gross. No, I admitted that I'm not going to admit that your butt is gross. Well, it doesn't matter because it is gross, and I hate everything in the world, and I'm never, ever going anywhere again in my life. Oh, come on, Sam, your butt is... Your butt isn't gross! All right, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Last chance. Led Zeppelin. Fair warning. What's the story? 
His butt's gross. <laughs> and uh, his thighs sort of rub together and they make that noise when he walks. Do they? <laughs> huh? Make that noise. Yeah. <laughs> I'm John, here's my report. Well, the Seattle Center Coliseum will now be known as the Key Arena due to a major sponsorship money provided by Key Bank. Key Bank narrowly edged out bidding rival Chef Boyardee, who would have changed the name of the Coliseum to the Chef Boyardee Beef Arena. <laughs> A new legal drug is hitting Seattle called Herbal Ecstasy, a mixture of green tea extract and herbs that promises hours of happiness. Now, the main benefit of the drug is that store clerks in Wallingford will probably seem a little more eager to help you than they were before. <laughs> An Olympia measure would revise the wording of marriage license to include the sentence, neither, <laughs> neither you nor your spouse is the property of each other. This replaces the current wording, don't sell your spouse to motorcycle people. <laughs> Earlier this evening, Dweezil Zappa hosted a Como TV special about pop culture in the 90s called Hype. Immediately following that, Como's Cindy Reinhart hosted a special retrospective of her career called Hyper. <laughs> a, new, a new Ralph Lauren sheet pattern has been named Tacoma Cream. Do we, do we need a punchline for this one here? Move ahead. All right. Thank you, yes. The Seattle Times has filed a lawsuit accusing the University of Washington of illegal secrecy in their search for a new president. The university has responded by canceling their subscription. <laughs> a, rot a Rottweiler dog in Roy was rescued from a branch 40 feet up in a tree last Tuesday. Coincidentally, firemen also rescued a mailman who was found 60 feet up in the same tree. <laughs> Finally, the state's proposed budget has been placed online on the internet, allowing users to provide their own input on suggested expenditures. So far, the most common input has been, I'm typing this while completely naked. <laughs> this has been the John Report. Thank you. And we'll be right back. and is an alcoholic. His name is Drunken Protestant Man. He helps widows and orphans and drinks his lunch each day. His name is Drunken Protestant Man. His name is Drunken Protestant Man. On tonight's episode, Drunken Protestant Man saves the day. Drunken Protestant man? Speaking. Hi, this is Matt from church. Hey, Matty, how you doing? Uh, not so good, drunken Protestant man. Well, what's the problem? Well, the youth group is supposed to meet down here at church tonight, but the doors are all locked, and we don't have oh, a key. I, I have a key, Matty. You do? Yeah. Well, could you bring it down? Sure. Oh, it's glad to help, but... You know, man, I'm pretty drunk right now, so I can't really drive, so I guess I could, uh, I don't know, take the bus. But I don't think I could read the schedule, so. I don't know, I'll, I'll call a cab. Oh, that'd be great. Thanks, drunken Protestant oh, man. sure, Matty, always, always happy to help. I'm really looking forward to this meeting. Oh, I, I know. Me too. He'll be here any minute. Hey, look, it's drunken Protestant man. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hey. Oh, oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. oh, great. Oh, you kids have a good time. Oh, I love thanks, it. Thanks, 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 thanks for having yeah. yeah. right, Thanks, man. Thanks, man. That, that, 
was my proudest moment on television right there. I want you, I'm glad you're all here to see my proudest moment on television. Anyway, I want you also to know I'm very proud of this Almost Lives Guide to Living in Seattle right there. There's the phone number to dial if you'd like to have it. And once again, that's 1-800-LIVE-868. Thank you very much. And I just also want to thank you all for inviting us into your homes because they're much nicer than ours. And <laughs> I just want to say that we agree with Pearl Jam. Don't cut up those frogs. And thanks, Cheap Trick. And I want my mom back again. Thanks and good night. And we'll see you next week.